While the film adaptation of Jurassic Park was more or less an accurate representation of its source material, there happens to be a lot of scenes absent in the movie that were present in the book. After the park is compromised, Robert Muldoon is asked by Hammond to take a gas jeep to bring back his grandchildren personally, and in the film he's accompanied by Dr. Sattler on this mission. However, in the novel, it is actually Donald Gennaro who comes with Robert Muldoon to assess the damage of Dennis Nedry's sabotage when the Rex is freed. Ed Regis, the character who basically inspired Gennaro's film version, is the one to get killed by the T-Rex paddock after its escape, and the lawyer is actually represented as a far more masculine and heroic type than what we saw in the movie. The two set out into Jurassic Park, but are actually on the hunt for locating the Tyrannosaurus and getting it back into its pen. The Rex has already wandered into other dinosaurs' paddocks, and Mr. Arnold, Dr. Wu, and Hammond want the creature contained ASAP. This has always been one of my favorite parts of Crichton's novel, and one of the things I'd love to see brought to life on the big screen in a future sequel. Muldoon initially refuses going out into the park and catching the T-Rex because of the lack of weapons needed to do the job. He had asked Hammond repeatedly for the proper guns and suitable weaponry needed to handle these dinosaurs, but the requests were never fulfilled. Muldoon eventually begins his journey with Gennaro and starts drinking whiskey while he drives through the jungle in the gas jeep. They come across what looks like a battleground, with grass areas stomped into the earth and blood all over the floor of the jungle. Muldoon states that there's no doubt about it, that old Rexy has definitely killed himself a hadrosaur. A swarm of flies is gathered around the area. Gennaro begins to get anxious and eventually speaks up, asking what are we waiting for to the game warden. Muldoon lets the lawyer know that the Rex is still out there and they don't have a chance in hell without the proper weapons. Donald is a bit more positive and acknowledges the fact that they have a jeep, to which he thinks makes them safe. Oh, he can outrun the jeep, Mr. Gennaro, Muldoon rebuttals. Once we get off this road, we can only do 30 or 40 miles per hour in four-wheel drive, and the T-Rex is going to run us right down. The hunter doesn't see any movement out there at the moment, however, and gives the lawyer a sigh before asking him a question. You ready to live dangerously? The lawyer nods, and the two begin their trek into Rex country. Muldoon stops the jeep in front of a large carcass loaded with flies. He jumps out of the car and orders Gennaro to grab the radio before assessing the deceased dinosaur that lay before him. He radioed Mr. Arnold in the control room, letting him know that another hadrosaur had been killed. This one specimen HD09, just a juvenile. Muldoon knows the Rex ambushed the herd and made them stampede in a retreat before grabbing this smaller animal that was unfortunate enough to get separated from the group. Mr. Arnold radios Muldoon with some information of his own, stating he's found Nedry. Muldoon races the jeep toward the coordinates Arnold gave him, stating the little bastard must have taken the wrong turnoff. Donald asks what exactly Nedry took, and is explained that Dr. Wu says he stole 15 dinosaur embryos, which are worth 2 to 10 million dollars. Muldoon pulls up to the body and sees it's covered in a large green mass, and as they drive closer to it, the green shapes disperse from the body and scatter. Compies got him, Muldoon remarks. Dennis Dentry was down on his back with a fat bloated face full of flies. His body stunk of decay, and his intestines had been torn out. Half of one of his legs was also eaten through. I'll be damned, Muldoon states, asking Gennaro if he could smell that dried vomit stench, to which the lawyer disgustingly could. Robert lets his partner know that it wasn't the Compies, but a Dilophosaurus that killed him. The smell gave it away as the scent of Dilo saliva. Muldoon explains that they keep an antidote to the venom all around the park, but it looks like Nedry got sprayed in the face and then torn into. They blinded him and then ripped him down the middle. Muldoon remarks that maybe there is justice in the world after all. Gennaro grabbed a metal case that Nedry had also stolen and handed it back to the hunter, asking just what it was exactly. Muldoon gladly takes them and explains that Nedry had stolen his rockets. They gather what's needed and depart back on their hunt for the Tyrannosaur. Mr. Arnold gives Muldoon the message that he's just found a Rex and tells him to remember to only immobilize the dinosaur and not kill it. Muldoon promises he won't hurt the Rex, but Arnold makes it known that Jurassic Park still needs the dinosaur as its main tourist attraction. Muldoon calls the staff in the control room bloody fools and finds it stupid to still be worried about tourists. Let's go see Rexy and give him a dose. I've wanted to put a needle in this big bastard for a while. They immediately stop and see that they are directly behind the Tyrannosaur which is moving around the palm trees down the river. Muldoon empties his bottle of whiskey before tossing it in the back seat and grabs hold of his gun. It looked like a bazooka to Gennaro. The lawyer helps Muldoon by readying the canisters that the game warden planned on shooting the Rex with. He asks what exactly the stuff was, to which Muldoon explained it as Moro 709, which is standard animal trank used in zoos. They plan on starting out with a thousand cc's. He lets the lawyer know that standard elephants usually get 200 cc's at two or three tons, but their Tyrannosaurus Rex is eight tons, and a lot meaner. Temperament matters to the dose just as much as size. They want to make sure this guy gets knocked out quick. Before advancing, Muldoon lets Gennaro know that all the animals the trank is used on in zoos are only mammals, and that nobody knows what will happen if you try and trank a dinosaur. The lawyer asks what the Rex is doing exactly, while he watches the animal poke its head through the trees around the river. Robert believes the Rex to be hunting the Microceratopsians that love to jump around the branches in the foliage, stating the little dinos would give him a merry chase. Muldoon stopped at 50 yards and jumped out of the jeep. He tells Gennaro to take the wheel and to put his seatbelt on. He crouches in some grass 10 meters away from the vehicle and lifts the weapon up to 
to his shoulder before lowering the telescopic laser sights. All of a sudden, Donald sees a huge burst of pale gas and a white streak darts toward the dinosaur, but nothing else happened. Then the Tyrannosaur slowly turned its head toward the two men and looked at them curiously. Donald asks anxiously if he hit the dinosaur and is given a negative response from the hunter, stating the laser sight's batteries were dead. He quickly takes the launcher down and begins to reload and tells Donald to look for the extra battery. The lawyer quickly brings his head down to examine the floor of the Jeep and is terrified to hear the loud, angry roar of the Tyrannosaur. <laughs> Arnold comes over the radio telling Muldoon to get out of there now, which prompts the game warden to brush him off and tell him he knows what he's doing. The Rex has made its mind up and charges at the Jeep, and Muldoon brings the launcher back up to his shoulder and shoots again. The gas comes, and the white streak darts toward the Tyrannosaur. But again, nothing happens. Muldoon jumps in the Jeep and tells Gennaro to get the hell out of there, and the two dart out of the jungle and begin their escape from the Rex. Eventually, the dinosaur loses interest and walks away from the chase, which allows Gennaro to comment on the hunter's aim, letting it very well known that Muldoon had indeed missed. The man begrudgingly accepts his criticism and says he should have checked the laser sights before their attack. They brush off the chase and begin their journey back to the control room, with their mission being a resounding failure. It's later revealed in a scene where the Tyrannosaur attempts to eat Lex and Tim behind a waterfall in the park that Muldoon actually didn't miss the Tyrannosaur in their hunt. After licking Tim, the Tyrannosaur's body collapses behind the waterfall with its teeth falling down directly on its tongue and the animal laying motionless under the water sleeping. Tim felt pity for the creature, not wanting it to drown underneath the sheet of water but quickly used the situation to his advantage and escaped from behind the waterfall. Eventually, the Costa Rican Air Force would napalm Isla Nublar and destroy all of the dinosaurs on the island once the survivors were picked up via helicopter. Curiously, Muldoon was indeed one of the people to survive his adventures in Jurassic Park, while the film version instead gave him a glorious death scene with one of the most famous lines in the franchise's history before he is killed by his much hated Velociraptors. This has always been a scene I was a huge fan of in the novel, and it was more or less done in The Lost World with Roland Timbo's character taking place of Robert Muldoon. This scene wasn't identical to what we saw in the novel, and was more of an easter egg for anyone that had read the first book than a real portrayal of its events. Nevertheless, I do love that scene, and I also love the part of the book, and I would really enjoy its inclusion in a future movie as I think it's an incredible sequence that could really add some action and suspense to the franchise. Now, hopefully you all enjoyed today's video, and if you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate it if you left me a like, and I hope you consider subscribing if you're interested in seeing me again. Thanks for taking the time to watch my content guys, and as always, take it easy.